Once again, good morning, everyone, and welcome to FuseNet's Regional Food Security Outlook Briefing for West Africa, covering the June 2024 to January 2025 period. My name is Lita Branham, and I'm a Senior Food Security Analyst at FuseNet, and I'm joined presenting today by my colleague, Marios Ratulajanahari, also a Food Security Analyst. And we'll start today by a brief regional overview, followed by a more in-depth look at two featured countries of concern. Um, for today, we'll be looking at Burkina Faso and Chad. So kicking off our regional overview with some key messages. Conflict remains the key driver of acute food insecurity in the region. And conflict has displaced millions of people from their typical sources of food and income, as well as disrupting uh, typical livelihood activities, market functioning, trade flows, and seasonal transhumance movements. The Liptako Gorma region, the Lake Chad Basin, northern Nigeria, northwest southwest Cameroon, the Central African Republic, as well as the influx of Sudanese refugees into Chad, remain of particular concern for the region. As the lean season progresses throughout the Sahel, household food stocks are at their seasonal low, while staple food prices are at their seasonal high. Localized below average 2023 to 2024 production, as well as conflict-related disruptions to livelihoods and high staple food prices in early 2024, led to an atypically early start to the lean season across most conflict-affected areas. Near average 2024 to 2025 regional production is most likely, though with pockets of localized below average production. Despite average to above average rainfall forecast for the June to September period, agricultural production across the region remains constrained by the high cost of inputs, conflict related disruptions, and erratic distribution of rainfall. Regional food assistance needs are expected to peak in the June to August 2024 lean season, with about 30 to 31 million people in need of urgent humanitarian assistance across the region. Countries of highest concern include Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Chad, where crisis IPC Phase 3 and emergency IPC Phase 4 outcomes are anticipated. And populations in northeast Nigeria, in the Menaka region of Mali, as well as in blockaded areas of Burkina Faso, need humanitarian assistance to prevent catastrophe outcomes. So, looking first at a seasonal calendar for West Africa in a typical year. If you look towards the middle of the calendar on the screen, our analysis period coincides with the beginning of the rainy season in the Sahel in June, which also marks the typical lean season where household food stocks are depleted. And the lean season typically runs from June to September in the Sahel, which is our ML1 period. And during the same time, the harvest is underway in the southern part of the region, representing mostly southern Cameroon and southern Nigeria. Now, the October to January period, this first block on the calendar on the slide, and our ML2 period for our analysis, represents the post-harvest period in the Sahel, as well as the second rainy season for bimodal parts of southern West Africa. Conflict remains the key driver of acute food insecurity in the region by reducing access to fields, impeding the distribution of agricultural inputs, disrupting trade flows, and causing displacement. Of particular note includes a notable increase in conflict incidences in Mali since mid-2023, with the resurgence of attacks led by the Permanent Strategic Framework for Peace, Security, and Development, also known as CSP, in northern Mali, as well as the persisting expansion by armed groups into central Mali. Conflict also remains elevated in northwest southwest Cameroon, as well as in the Lake Chad Basin, with increased conflict incidences in far north Cameroon in particular. Now, across the region, displacement continues to increase. According to the IOM, the Sahel registered over 3.1 million IDPs, with the majority of which uh, are in Burkina Faso. Now, in the Lake Chad Basin, IOM registered over 6 million IDPs, with nearly 75% recorded in northeast Nigeria. And as we can see on the graph here on the left, Nigeria continues to register the highest number of conflict incidents in the region. Looking at the graph on the right here, which shows conflict events in Nigeria in particular, conflict has, we can see that conflict has remained elevated in northeast Nigeria. 
And though we've seen some relative stability uh, in Northeast Nigeria, which has permitted some returns of displaced populations, particularly as the government continues to push to close longstanding IDP camps, we've seen an expansion of conflict into Northwest Nigeria in recent years, where banditry and kidnapping have notably escalated. We're also seeing an expansion of conflict into North Central Nigeria, where the same banditry and kidnapping has been coupled with increased farmer herder tensions. And this is driving increased conflict incidences in that part of the country as well. Now, despite conflicts impacts on agricultural production, regional production for the 2023 to 2024 season was near average, though this was driven primarily by good production in coastal countries. Now, with the exception of rice, production of other major cereal crops, including maize, millet, and sorghum, declined compared to the previous season, as we can see by the figure on the left. And this was mainly due to increased production costs, prolonged dry spells, and insecurity-related declines in cultivated area, particularly in the Sahel. Now, West Africa is typically a deficit producer of both rice and wheat, and the region is expected to remain a net importer of both goods, as shown by the figure on the right. Though we'll get into later in the presentation, the import of key goods remains constrained by macroeconomic factors impacting the region. Looking now at the current rainfall season, June marked the beginning of the rainy season in West Africa, which was generally erratic. The figure on the left shows how the official onset of rains compared to the long-term average, with cool colors indicating an early start and warm colors indicating a late start to the season. And we can see that the arrival of rains was delayed by multiple weeks in areas of northern Nigeria, southern Niger, southern Mali, western Burkina Faso, and southern Chad. And this resulted in many households either delaying their planting or needing to replant as late as June or even early July. Now, cumulative precipitation received so far during the rainy season has also been mixed, though has generally been near average across the region. As of late June, rainfall was significantly below average in parts of Southern Mauritania, Western Mali, and Southern Chad, though rainfall seemed to have improved in early to mid July across the region. Flooding has also been observed in central Mali, southern Chad, and southern Niger, which is likely, likely locally impacted crops, though the extent of damage to fields and productive assets and what that means for the upcoming season is difficult to ascertain this early in the season. Current forecasts for the rest of the season remain for a late end to the season, which, if that comes to fruition, may allow crops in these replanted areas to reach maturity, though this is also dependent on the timing and length of dry spells throughout the rest of the season as well. And given the primary climate drivers in West Africa, notably the ascent of the intertropical convergence zone, it's really difficult to make localized precipitation forecasts at long lead times for the region. So while we anticipate generally cumulative average rainfall. Close monitoring of rainfall is particularly needed in August as this coincides with key growth periods for crops. Um, and in particular for these areas that registered a late start of the season or dry spells early in the season. The macroeconomic crisis persists in Nigeria with inflation trending at a near 30 year high. And this is dry driven primarily by high food and fuel prices. Now this, coupled with the continued depreciation of the Nigerian Naira, has led to persisting economic morosity and is fueling protests across the country, as demonstrated by the protests to increase the federal minimum wage earlier in the year, as well as the ongoing protests against economic hardship that took place early in August. And the economic crisis in Nigeria also has regional implications, particularly on, on regional trade flows. Nigeria used to be the major exporter of cereals to neighboring countries, primarily Niger. And the macroeconomic downturn in Nigeria, coupled with the drop in crop production in past years, due both to agroclimatic and security factors, has led to significantly reduced outflows of key staple goods. The federal government has also banned cereal exports amid tensions in the market, marked by below average supplies, substantial demand, and soaring food prices. 
Furthermore, Nigeria is the primary destination of livestock and cash crops from the Sahel. And the sharp depreciation of the Naira has led to reduced presence of Nigerian traders in Sahel markets, as the West African franc is now more expensive for them, and also a lower presence of Sahelian traders in Nigeria, since the Naira is now less attractive to them. And in addition to trade disruptions linked to the macroeconomic crisis in Nigeria, conflict continues to disrupt market functionality and trade routes supply in several areas across the region, particularly in the Lake Chad Basin and in the Liptako Gorma region, which is depicted on the map on this slide. The yellow indicates some disruption and reduced activity, brown indicates significant disruption and limited activity, and the darkest brown indicates minimal to no activity, which we can see overlaps with the worst conflict affected parts of Mali, Niger, and Burkina Faso. And both internal trade flows in all three countries and cross-border trade remain significantly reduced due to persisting conflict, despite increased military coordination between the three countries following the formation of the Confederation of Sahel States. In addition to conflict and in response to regional socio-political dynamics, such as the imposition of sanctions following the coup in Niger in 2023, as well as due to localized poor production in 2023, among other factors, several countries have imposed trade restrictions, particularly on the export of key goods, as we can see on the table on the right here. Of particular note include the export ban I previously mentioned in Nigeria, as well as the continued hostilities between Benin and Niger that has resulted in export restrictions between those two countries, as well as a general widespread ban on cereal exports across most Sahelian countries. Now, cereal, uh, staple food prices remain high across the region. Cereal prices rose on several markets during the ongoing lean season, and they remain well above their five-year average, due mainly to below average supply, protracted conflict and insecurity, and persistent trade restrictions. Food prices are also above last year's prices, particularly in Niger, due to the previous year's uh, below average production and reduced inflows from neighboring countries. Food prices are also above last year in Chad due to the high transportation costs and reduced import flows from Nigeria, as well as in northern Cameroon due to a below average harvest in 2023. And once again, in Nigeria, the weak Naira and high fuel prices continue to drive high food prices in Nigeria. Prices are expected to remain high throughout the lean season. The map on the left is showing the uh, maize prices compared to the five-year average in June of this year, where brown indicates an increase from 25 to 49%, and dark brown indicates a major increase above 50% compared to average. And as we can see on this map, maize prices are significantly high by over 50% in the Liptako Gorma, the Lake Chad Basin, and northern Nigeria. A similar trend is observed for a millet, as we can see on the graph on the right here, which is another key staple food in the region. Millet remains significantly above the five-year average across key markets uh, in all countries. Now, across the region, livestock prices are also near average, as we can see on the graph on the left, which shows the price of goat compared to the five-year average across select markets in the region. However, the graph on the right is showing the terms of trade for goat to millet in the same markets. This represents how many bags of millet a house is able to purchase with the sale of one goat. And despite overall average livestock prices, terms of trade for livestock to cereals remains below average, meaning that the sale of one goat is able to purchase less millet compared to the five-year average. And this is mainly due to the increase in staple food prices that has outpaced livestock prices, which is further constraining pastoral households' ability to purchase food on the market. So looking at our projected acute food insecurity outcomes for the region, in the June to September period, um, represented by the map on the left, as I previously mentioned, this period coincides with the lean season across the Sahel, when household food stocks are depleted, staple food prices are seasonally high, and food availability is generally low. 
Across worst conflict-affected areas of northeast Nigeria, northern Burkina Faso, and the Manica region of Mali, escalating conflict has reduced typical seasonal variability, which is leading to high needs throughout the year, but that are further exacerbated during the lean season. In these areas, households are unable to engage in typical livelihood activities such as livestock rearing and agricultural production. Emergency IPC Phase 4 outcomes are expected in Borno, Abadam, Guzamala, and Marte LGAs of Northeast Nigeria and in the Menaka region of Mali. In northern Burkina Faso, planned humanitarian assistance that is likely to reach major town centers of blockaded areas, either via helicopter or convoy, are likely to partially mitigate food consumption gaps and prevent emergency outcomes. Similarly, ongoing humanitarian assistance in the areas hosting refugees in eastern Chad is also likely preventing emergency outcomes. Across other conflict hotspots, widespread crisis outcomes are expected, particularly in central Mali, northern and central Burkina Faso, southern Niger, northern Chad, and northern Nigeria. Fusenet also expects that crisis is the highest area level phase classification for remotely monitored countries of Mauritania, Togo, and the Central African Republic, driven largely by conflict in Togo and the Central African Republic, as well as the influx of Malian refugees and poor rainfall in Mauritania. High staple food prices linked to seasonal increases in the lean season, as well as persisting inflation in Nigeria and overall low food availability, is also driving widespread stressed outcomes across the majority of the region. Now, as we turn to the map on the right, which represents the post-harvest period in the Sahel, food availability will likely increase across the region with the harvest. A seasonal decline in staple food prices is likely, though prices will remain above average. And agricultural and agro-pastoral households will likely consume food from their own production, and pastoral households' income will likely improve with the improvement of livestock body conditions during this time. As such, a general improvement in food security outcomes is anticipated across the region, particularly in those less conflict-affected areas of the region. However, protracted conflict has significantly eroded seasonal variability across the Liptako Gorma region, and northern Chad, where severe acute food insecurity remains most likely even in the post-harvest period. Widespread crisis outcomes are anticipated in Mali, Niger, and Chad, while emergency outcomes will likely persist in worse conflict-affected parts of northeast Nigeria. Now, while humanitarian assistance typically declines with the post-harvest period across the region, historical trends and current humanitarian priorities suggest that food aid will continue in the blockaded areas of Burkina Faso, as well as in eastern Chad, even during the post-harvest period. As such, Fusenet estimates that crisis outcomes will persist. However, if food aid is not maintained or if conflict escalates, emergency IPC Phase 4 outcomes would be likely in both of these areas. So turning now towards uh, our featured countries of concern and starting with Burkina Faso, conflict remains the key driver of acute food insecurity in Burkina Faso as armed groups, namely the violent extremist organization JNIM, continue to expand territorial control. Now nationwide, the number of security incidences involving armed groups reported from January through uh, May of this year, remained about 30% below the levels observed over the same period in 2023, while the number of fatalities has, however, remained elevated. Now, while large-scale sporadic attacks persist in the Sahel and North regions in particular, as, as illustrated by the attack on the military base in Mansila earlier this year, a year-on-year -year decrease in incidences in the Sahel and Nord has generally been recorded. Now, this, coupled with the increase in security incidences recorded in central Burkina Faso, supports the assumption that JNIM has met many of its objectives in northern Burkina Faso and instead continues to prioritize the expansion of operations into central Burkina Faso as the group pivots forces and resources inland to further pressure trade routes and supply lines and extend its influence over civilian populations in areas previously less impacted by militant violence. As armed groups are continuing to maintain blockades on population centers and supply lines, however, 
With the ongoing military operations and a probable shift in JNIM strategy, it appears that JNIM has shifted focus away from large-scale besiegement, such as the blockade that we saw on Jibo in early 2023, and is instead opting to instead disrupt flows across larger parts of the country, as we can see by the general uh, lack of market functioning across most of northern Burkina Faso. And in addition to attacks on military and civilian cargo convoys, armed groups are continuing to plant improvised explosive devices, which is making the internal flow of goods and the movement of people difficult. About 30 localities remain dependent on military escorts for market supply, primarily across northern and eastern Burkina Faso. And the time between convoys varies depending on the location and the level relative level of insecurity. However, most localities have received one to two supply convoys over the first half of the year. And a general improvement in the time between convoys have been observed, primarily in Seno and Udalan provinces as the military continues to attempt to secure the Dori to Gorom Gorom axis. I just note that Diapaga, which is in eastern Burkina Faso, was supplied for the first time in six months in mid-July. Um, after this graph was made. And as of late June, food shortages had not been observed across markets in blockaded areas, as had been the case in 2023. Though as of mid-July, key informants in Chibo, Arbinda, and Barcelogo have begun to report some shortages of staple foods, as these towns were last reached by convoy in April. Now, given the extreme constraints related to household mobility, particularly in blockaded areas, and the persisting security and logistical challenges tied to supplying markets via armed convoy, food access and availability is significantly limited across northern Burkina Faso. While the security radius has increased around many blockaded towns compared to last year, households remain unable to reach their fields to engage normally in the ongoing agricultural season. Vegetable production remains the main source of locally produced food, particularly among dams such as Jibo and Titao or near town centers. And this is particularly the case as the ban on tall growing crops such as sorghum persists in conflict affected areas across the country. Access to income also remains severely limited and households, particularly women, continue to risk their lives to leave the security radius in search of wood to sell or for wild foods. Key informants have indicated that remittances have become an important source of income for households in blockaded areas, particularly since the reestablishment of phone lines and banking services in mid-2023. And while the influx of remittances reportedly increases around market supply convoys, the persisting high staple food prices keeps market purchases out of reach for many poor households. Now, despite a general decrease in prices compared to 2023, as we can see on by the green on the graph on this slide, 2023 represented a record year for prices, particularly in blockaded areas, um, as denoted by the areas with the red box around them. Prices, however, remain well above their five-year average across the country. And this is further constraining households' ability to purchase food. As such, food assistance remains the primary source of food in areas with a high presence of IDPs and worst conflict affected areas where households only have marginal sources of income for, mar for market purchases. However, the delivery of this food assistance still faces logistical security and financial challenges. As of late June, only about 20% of the humanitarian response plan for food security was funded and food aid continues to be delivered via helicopter to select municipalities, while the use of military convoys to deliver humanitarian and government assistance has also increased. Now, planned humanitarian assistance for the lean season indicates a rather large-scale coverage of humanitarian needs planned for Lurum, Sum, Udalan, and Komanjari, where over 25% of the population is expected to, re to receive at least a 50% ration. Key informants indicate that large-scale sharing continues in blockaded areas, suggesting that the coverage of humanitarian food assistance is actually likely larger, though households are likely consuming a smaller ration. 
And given um, current trends in prioritization, we also anticipate that humanitarian partners will continue to prioritize blockaded areas where the most severe acute food insecurity is also uh, recorded in the country. And despite seasonal decreases in the volume of aid that we typically see between October and January with the conclusion of lean season programs by certain partners, historical trends over the past few years, as well as current plans by partners, point to a continued prioritization of food assistance in blockaded areas through at least the end of the year. As we look at our key assumptions that underline FuseNet's analysis, Conflict will persist at a similar or higher intensity than observed last year, though will continue to follow seasonal trends. So conflict typically decreases during the rainy season due to reduced mobility of armed groups. And while we anticipate conflict to follow these seasonal trends, the security situation will remain highly volatile across northern Burkina Faso. Armed groups will continue large-scale attacks in the north, as well as continued expansion into western and central Burkina. Now, while the government rolled out an agricultural support program for farmers early in the season, agricultural production will remain constrained by conflict, particularly in northern Burkina Faso. In blockaded areas, while vegetable production was a significant source of food and income in late 2023 and early 2024, the early drying up of, the, of water sources limited this resource between April and May. Now, the beginning of the rainy season has facilitated a resurgence of this activity and the regeneration of for as well as the regeneration of wild foods, though neither will be sufficient to significantly improve household food consumption throughout the analysis period. While staple food prices have generally decreased compared to last year, they will remain well above average. And the weak and irregular market supply in conflict affected areas, as well as minimal income earning opportunities and the erosion of household assets will continue to limit households access to food throughout the production period. Finally, once again, planned humanitarian food assistance is anticipated to cover um, a large portion of the population in Sum, Udalan, Seno, Yaga, and Lurum provinces through at least December 2024. As we look at our projected acute food insecurity outcomes for Burkina Faso, across northernmost Burkina Faso, households have now faced blockades for over 2.5, two and a half years in some localities. Years of marginal agricultural production, the looting of livestock and other goods, and minimal market functioning has eroded livelihoods in these areas. And key informants continue to report that humanitarian assistance is a key source of food for households in blockaded areas. Ongoing and planned humanitarian assistance in Lurum, Sum, Udalan, Seno, and Yaga provinces is expected to partially mitigate food consumption gaps, and crisis IPC Phase 3 outcomes are expected through January 2025. In other municipalities where conflict disrupts livelihood activities and partially disrupts humanitarian access, notably in the Centre Nord, Est, and Bulk du Mohun regions, crisis outcomes are also expected through at least September. And food security is likely expected to improve in some parts of central and eastern Burkina Faso in the October to January period, particularly in the relatively calmer and higher agricultural producing areas of the country. Now, as you can see on the maps, FuseNet anticipates that the most likely scenario is that ongoing or planned humanitarian food assistance is likely mitigating worse outcomes in northernmost Burkina Faso, denoted by the widespread exclamation points on the maps. And while food aid generally decreases after October, historical trends and current humanitarian priorities suggest that food aid will continue in the areas under blockade. However, in an alternative scenario where the delivery of humanitarian assistance is disrupted, whether by increased insecurity or logistical challenges, households would likely be dependent on the markets with little access to incomes. Price gouging and food shortages would also be likely, and households would likely begin facing extreme food consumption gaps indicative of emergency, IPC phase four. Given the challenges to the delivery of humanitarian assistance in the context of Burkina Faso, FuseNet is continuing to closely monitor this aspect of our analysis across priority areas, and we'll continue to update our analysis monthly. But I want to once again underscore, though, how imperative it is that humanitarian food assistance is not only maintained, but scaled up through at least January 2025. 
With that, I have concluded on Burkina Faso and we'll turn it over to Marius for Chad. Thank you, Lita. Next slide, please. Conflict is a key driver of acute food insecurity within Chad. Different types of actors with different motivations cause conflict and insecurity in Chad. The map on the right highlights these conflict hotspot areas in the north, in Tibesti province, in the west, in the Lac region, in the south, the agricultural zone, mainly in Logon Oriental and the Logon Occidental, and in the east, in the Uadai province. Conflict events in the capital were related to various political events. On the northern border with Libya, the, the two key actors are rebel group and the government security forces. Strengthening the security forces position to prevent rebel incursions disrupt trade flows, especially imported goods from Libya. Additionally, the ban on artisanal gold panning due to security measures decreased labor migration in Tibet province. The security measures implemented in the northern provinces also disrupt market supply and impact poor household in Kanem and Barrel Gazelle, which depend on the market for their source of food. The Lac region has been significantly affected by the Islamic State of the West Africa province, ISWAP, attacks, which have uh, disrupted cross-border trade flows, market functionality, and led to population displacement. The insecurity has not only forced farmers to abandon their land, resulting in decrease in planted area and a significant impact on agricultural production, but also prevented deep water fishing due to security restrictions. In the south, the Sudanian zone, conflict between farmers and herders cause insecurity, loss of livelihood, and localized population displacement, intercommunal conflict have also been observed in the East, particularly in the Uwate province. Next slide, please. Conflict are disrupting cross-border trade. The attack of Islamic State of West Africa province in Chad uh, Lake Basin disrupt cross-border trade between Chad, Niger, Nigeria, and Cameroon. The volume of food supply in most markets is below average due to insecurity and the high transportation cost caused by the high fuel prices since the removal of fuel subsidies by the government. Food prices across the country are rising compared to five-year average. In June, millet prices are up to 85% in Abishé market, 60% in Paul, and 25% in Jamena markets compared to the five-year average. The map on the left shows the market functionality and trade route activity in Chad. Yellow indicates some disruption, brown indicates significant disruption and limited activity, while dark brown indicates minimal to no activities. On the left, the graph shows the millet price in Abishé, Paul, and Jamena markets. Millet prices increases as the season progresses to the lean, sea, lean period. The chart, the chart also shows the disruption caused by insecurity is raising price of staple food, as illustrated by the price in the Paul market in Chad Lake Basin. The map shows that one of the supply in the ball market is in brown, which indicates significant disruption, and the ball market is in yellow, which indicates reduced activities. Looking at the graph on the left, millet prices in the ball market are largely higher than in Abishé and Jamina. Ball market is, a, is highlighted in the red circle on the map and, the, and on the graph. Next slide, please. The border between Chad and Sudan has been closed since the onset of the conflict in Sudan in April 2023. This has led to a cessation of cross-border trade and a significant influx of Sudanese refugees and Chadian returnees in the eastern provinces, including Wadai, Sila, Watifira, and Henedi East. As of July 17, the number of registered refugees has surpassed 629,000 Sudanese 
and 176,000 uh, Chadian returnees. The influx of refugees is driving competition over labor opportunities with the host community. The limited income earning opportunities for refugees and the limited availability of humanitarian food assistance exacerbate further the competition. The graph on the left shows the cumulative total arrival of refugees in Eastern Province since the beginning of the conflict. Wadai Province hosted more than 70% of the refugees, while Sila and Wadifira hosted 15 and 14% respectively. Since February 2024, Chad has registered an average monthly arrival of 14,000 refugees. The map on the right shows the number of refugees hosted in each refugee camp. Adre, a transit camp, hosted more than 200,000 refugees. In Wadeh province, refugees are concentrated in Arfunga department, where they represent more than 50% of the population. In Kimiti, Sila provinces, refugees represent 27% of the population. Next slide, please. Humanitarian food assistance needs are elevated. Humanitarian food assistance needs are high, given Sudanese refugees lost their livelihood and asset when fleeing to eastern province of Chad. Thus, for refugees, for refugees, humanitarian food assistance remains their main source of food. TISNET does not have access to full assistance distribution reports, but rather relies on information from the field assessment, key informant, and partial distribution data. The chart on the right shows incomplete data on the number of beneficiaries of humanitarian food assistance by month. Given this data alongside available information for, from other sources, we assess that the number of beneficiaries is much higher. However, the graph indicates that significant number of refugees depend on food assistance. Due to the large share of refugees in Ashunga and Kimiti, this department receives more, more food assistance than others. 29% of the total population in Ashunga received food assistance, and a large proportion of population in Kimiti were also beneficiaries of humanitarian food assistance, mainly cash transfer. The field assessment result and the information from key informant found that the distribution of food assistance was irregular, and compared to the needs, the volume distributed was low. The anticipated harvest in September should decrease the number of population in need of food assistance seasonally. However, the continued influx of refugees will keep the need for food assistance elevated. We would also like to highlight what FuseNet, with concurrence from the IPC Famine Review Committee, assesses famine is currently ongoing in at least one refugee camp in Al Fasher, North Darfur of Sudan. And it is possible famine is ongoing in at least two of their camps. FuseNet is also monitoring the risk of famine among IDPs across Greater Darfur more broadly. The situation indicates the importance of delivering food assistance to refugees in eastern Chad, as many Sudanese refugees, especially those arriving from Great Darfur, may be facing extreme food consumption gaps and the nutritional outcome upon arrival. Next slide, please. Certain key assumptions. Continued fighting throughout Sudan, notably in the greater Darfur region, is expected to drive further refugee flows into Chad. Refugees will continue to put pressure on food and income sources. Farmer border conflicts are expected to spike from September to mid-November due to the early return of pastoralists. Violence in, is likely to reach higher level than observed in 2023 and is mainly concentrated in Mandul, Gera, Logon Oriental, Logon Occidental, Mayu KP, and Moyen Shari. Increasing staple food prices compared to the five-year average will likely continue during the rainy season due to market pressure on the and the high fuel, co fuel cost following the government removal of subsidies. 
High fuel prices will continue to negatively impact transportation costs and ultimately market supply and food prices. Demand for livestock, livestock export to Nigeria will remain below average due to the depreciation of Nigerian currency Naira and insecurity on road used for transportation. Humanitarian food assistance will continue through the end of the year among Sudanese refugees and Chadian returnees despite the harvest from September or October, we, and we anticipate it will continue. The chart on the red shows um, the previous slide. The chart on the red, uh, thank you. The chart on the red shows the millet price projection in Abishai market. Price will remain higher than the five-year average for the outlook period. Next slide, please. The projected uh, acute food insecurity outcome in the eastern provinces of Wadai, Sila, Wadifira, and Eniti West, Eniti Est, the influx of Sudanese refugees and Chadian returnees will continue to put pressure on livelihood and increase competition on the few agricultural and non-agricultural labor opportunities, decreasing further wages. Refugees and host communities face rising staple food price during the lean season, July to September, resulting in limited access to food and consumption deficit. However, the refugee dependence on food assistance limits their food consumption deficit. Due to the amount of food assistance received, crisis, exclamation point, IPC phase three, are expected in Ashunga and Kimiti throughout the outlook period. Crisis IPC phase three outcome are expected in the remaining department in Watai and Sila, Wadifira, and the West provinces, despite seasonal improvement in consumption for host household benefiting harvest from October from October 2024 to January 2025. On the map, the red circle indicates the area of concern of uh, the Ashunga department in Watai province and the Kimiti department in Sila province. Delivering food aid is critical for, to at least partial mitigate to, to at least partially mitigate the severity of refugees' household caloric deficit. And planned delivery of humanitarian food assistance is a key factor expected to prevent emergency APC phase four outcome in area hosting large refugees population in the Watai and Sila provinces, which indicate by the exclamation point. In the Lac region, and the West Sile crisis APC phase three is expected throughout the outlook period. In the Lac region, insecurity is driving population displacement and increasing the deterioration of livelihood of host, host household and ITPs. They face high staple food prices and they depend on the market to access food. The West Sile, Barrel, Gazelle, and Canem are food deficient region but depend on the market for household uh, food sources. Pastoralist revenue is decreasing as the term of trade between goat and millet are below average, as mentioned earlier. High staple food prices limit household access to food, resulting in food consumption deficit. In the Sahara, Northern provinces, crisis APC phase three outcome persists throughout the outlook period due to limited market supply caused by insecurity and high transportation costs as also depend on the market to access food. In the southern agricultural area between June to August, households face stressed IPC phase two due to household stock depletion and dependence on the market, while staple food prices are high. The limited income available and the consumption of wild food limit their food consumption deficit. However, from October 2024 to January 2025, as harvest will improve their food consumption, households will be in minimal IPC phase one. Excellent, please. So that ends the presentation of uh, um, uh, Chad. Uh, we are ending the presentation by placing this regional projected acute food insecurity outcome maps here uh, for your reference.